We've been using molar mass, but we've never talked about atomic mass. Uh, molar mass is what you use if you're talking about a mole or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Atomic mass is when you're just talking about a single atom or particle. Uh, what we have in front of us are four different things. This illustrations from your book. All these have equal number of particles. Each of them have a mole, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Let's see if you can recognize these. The yellow stuff is sulfur. These are nails, which are iron. Uh, this is iodine, I2. That might be one you're not sure about or you wouldn't recognize. And then in the bottle, it may look like water, but it's actually one of the only two elements on the periodic table that's a liquid. That's mercury. It's a liquid metal. So there, all these things are equal as far as number of particles. There's one mole, but what's different about each one is a mass. They each have different mass. So when you have that number of particles, each one has a different mass. How, how do you do molar mass? We've gone over this. We've done this. Molar mass is a mass of one mole of a substance. So what you have to do is basically look and see when you look at barium nitrate in the formula, there's one barium, or there's one barium here. So one barium has a mass of 137.3. And then you notice that there's two nitrogens because there's two nitrates. So two nitro, two times 14.01, which is a mass of nitrogen. And then uh, there's uh, two nitrates, uh, which means there's two times three, which is six oxygens times 16 gives us the mass oxygen contributes. This gives us a total molar mass of 261.3 grams. Please get in the habit of when you do the problems, all of this work right here should be done in your calculator. You do not have to show me this work unless I ask for it. So that work should just be done in your calculator. Your molar mass is what you want to put directly in the problem when we do those. Um, here's another example of molar mass. We, this is a, on the video from yesterday where we talked about ibuprofen, which has a formula C13H18O2. Ibuprofen, we see it's in uh, over-the-counter medications that they call ibuprofen, Advil or Motrin. This is a molecular structure. We'll learn how to draw the shapes of things later for ibuprofen. This means each, each bend is a carbon. So if we were to look at this, we'd find in this structure there's 13 carbons, 18 hydrogens, and two oxygens. We'll learn how the, these structures work later. That's not what we want, want to know about now. But you should know how to uh, determine the molar mass of ibuprofen, which includes 13 carbons, which has a mass of 12.01. 18 hydrogens, which has a mass of 1.008, and two oxygens, which has a mass of 16. And so the total molar mass of ibuprofen is 206.7. Now the average atomic mass is what we're doing today, and that's new. That's the mass of a single one atom or one particle. So we're not talking about a mole, so it's only one. Um, so for this, average atomic mass is mass of a single atom, molecule, ion, or formula unit. Formula unit just means something that's ionic. You may have noticed that on uh, that terminology on the lab. Um, it's a sum of the masses of all the atoms in the chemical formula, and it's in AMUs. For example, with water, uh, you take two times a, uh, the, and you see here when you do this, you'll two, two atoms of, of water, and the atoms cancel, but it has a molar mass of 1.008, so 2.016, and then you two two oxygen atoms, not 10 atoms, and one oxygen atom has a mass of 60 AMUs. And so the way we're doing this, you notice, is just exactly the same as a way that we do molar mass, except we're saying this is average atomic units, AMUs. Um, and so that represents what's different here is we just basically have different units. So the uh, final answer is 18.016 AMUs. That's the atomic mass for water. If we did the molar mass, it'd just be 18.016 grams. Um, thus, the calculation, calculation of molar mass is equal to the average atomic mass, just the units are different. Uh, so uh, just for comparison's sake, molar mass is the mass of exactly one mole or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or particles that you're looking at. Average atomic mass is, we're referring to a single atom or particle. Uh, and the units for average atomic mass are in AMUs. And we'll, and if I ask for a, a question like this, of asking for a mass, I'll probably specify that one in AMUs. Almost all the time, we're going to be using mostly grams. And both of these are based on the mass of carbon-12. Uh, for example, the molar mass of barium nitrate is 261 grams. The average atomic mass is 261 AMUs. The molar mass of ibuprofen we just calculated was 206 grams. The average atomic mass was 206 AMUs. So that would be the average mass of a particle, of one single particle, 
of ibuprofen. The average mass of a mole of carbon is 12.01 grams. The average mass of a carbon atom is 12.01 AMUs. Um, once again, CO2, the average mass of a mole of carbon of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles or molecules of carbon is 44.01 grams, but the average mass of a carbon molecule, a single carbon molecule, is 44.01 AMUs. AMU is, a, is very small. Um, the mass of one AMU is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 24 grams. You will not need to use this number or memorize this number. It's just to let you know that it's so small. And I just throw through bismuth up there. That would be the, so if I was talking about, for example, bismuth, the uh, molar mass of bismuth would be 208.98, but the average atomic mass was 208.98 AMUs. Uh, so let's do a problem here. The calculation of molar mass and atomic mass are the same, but how they're used is very different. Here's the question. What is the mass of 1,000 carbon atoms in AMUs and in grams? So we know that one carbon atom has a mass of 12.01 AMUs. So if we had 1,000, that's the number we'd start with. We'd multiply 1,000 carbon atoms by 12 AMUs, which is what we're trying to find, over one carbon atom. You see that the carbon atoms cancel. And so basically, you'd multiply 1,000 times 12.01 AMUs to get the mass of 1,000 carbon atoms in grams. So calculate that and see what you get. The second part is how do you do this in grams? So you'd still th start with the carbon atoms. But now, we, if we're going to grams, we have to use Avogadro's number here. So we have to know there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in a, in a mole. And so what I did is I put atoms at the bottom. And then I put the mass of a mole of atoms at the top, which is 12.01 grams. And so the answer for the second question will be in grams. The answer for the first question will be in AMUs. And so with these answers, hopefully you got these two answers. You got one th uh, 12,010 AMUs. That's uh, the mass of 1,000 carbon atoms in AMUs. And 1,000 carbon atoms in grams would be uh, notice for this first one, and for both these, actually, carbon atoms are canceling. And so for the next one, we say 1,000 times 12.01 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Uh, and notice this is an extremely small number, so you get 2.00 times 10 to the minus 20 grams, and uh, as opposed to 12.01 AMUs. So in summary, uh, AMUs and grams, the calculation of those values are very are very similar, exactly the same, but how they're used is very different. And this is and it shows a perfect example of how they're used and the calculation is very different. Uh, that's it. Thank you.